Oh, it is Tuesday night around nine o'clock ish. We're a little late. That happens. Uh, <laughs> this is Goal Horns and Fight Songs. I am your host, Wes, also known on the Twitters as Painted Bronco. There is no Michael tonight. He is a little under the weather, much like I was this weekend. So we have asked the big winner of the trio, though, to come on. That being Brent, and as his Omaha Mavericks are the one team out of the three that are represented on this show weekly that made it to the second round of the playoffs. Um, so congratulations to you guys, first and foremost. Thank you. Thank you. I will say Finally. I did not see much hockey this weekend. I maybe caught 10 minutes on Friday. Uh, I topped out at a fever of 103 and decided it was best to just keep my big old self in bed. So missed all of the fun this weekend, which was awesome. And by awesome, I mean yeah. not at all. So. Yeah. Uh, Omaha CC was as advertised. Um, it was obviously Friday was fun for about 30 minutes. And then the last 30 minutes was not so much fun. <laughs> um, but then the rest of the weekend was a bit more even. Saturday night was still kind of lackluster for Omaha, but they got the win, got it out the win. And then Sunday just able to find the uh, the tiebreaker in the third and hold on. The, the Sunday's game was much more even. They were able to keep shots on goal to, within 10, which uh, really helped shut down after the uh, Bremer goal to put them ahead. And uh, man, it, it was awesome. I was I was at a, a watch party with um, our group, the Red Army, and um, we all went crazy. It was, it was a lot of fun to watch and Thankfully, it didn't end like Friday night because Friday night I was I was live on Twitch and um, my demeanor for the latter half was I didn't talk much because I was just in awe of what was happening. <laughs> oh, I am very much along those same lines, depending on games. Uh, like I refuse to wear jerseys to games. I have a closet full of jerseys just off camera over there that I cannot wear to games because every time I have attempted to wear a jersey to a game. Western has chosen that that game will be awful. And I have either taken the jersey off and they have come rallied back to force overtime or get close to overtime. Or I have suffered through the loss wearing the jersey and I will, and I have said never again. So I will no longer wear jerseys. Uh, Not superstitious. You're just a little stitious. Oh, no, I'm super fucking. I'm superstitious. I I will wear. I try not to go to a game unless I have a lost and lunatic shirt on, at least underneath my sweatshirt. You know, I have. This... Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't going to mention this anywhere until our season had ended. But uh, the uh, the Denver weekend, the for both games, I wore the frozen face off sweatshirt about last year. Uh, kind of hoping to spark some give some good juju out in the world kind of bless baxter arena a little bit yeah didn't work absolutely <laughs> did not work uh so i haven't worn it since <laughs> i mean I, I think i think at this point i might be pretty well known as one of the more superstitious fans across the conference considering i paint my face for 90 to 5 percent of the games i go to and if it is not that working is I will change up the face paint. I will I will scour the internet for slightly different lines to make sure that it is not the same mojo going into the next weekend. Um but yeah, no, it's awesome that you guys get to go for your first trip. Um you'll meet St. Cloud who took out Western in three games, which you know I had the series go in three, not the result I wanted, but did have it go in all three days. Uh Denver, who is Yet to miss a trip to St. Paul, and uh, you know your your greatest rival rival there in uh, North Dakota making the trip back. Um, fun fact: I think the only time North Dakota missed the trip to St. Paul was because they played Denver in the first round of the NCHC playoffs. So yeah, I meant then, I meant to look back at that, but uh, makes sense. Denver is the only team that has played every frozen face off um there was some controversy controversies 
on the weekend as Twitter informed me in moments of clarity over the weekend. Um, now, we're going to play a little game called Ref and the Refs. Actually, we're going to check out what Alex is saying here in the chat first. He is a fellow Mavs fan. He said, finally broke the curse. Go Mavs. Yeah, go Mavs. Mm -hmm. I'll root for you, but I really wish it was the Broncos instead. Uh, <laughs> Denver series, wore my black jersey. I've never worn that jersey since and wore my white one instead. We ended up winning every home game the rest of the season. See, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, All see, about the mojo. Everyone had the weird. Everyone has their little thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think sometimes the fans, the fans are more superstitious than the players. I think sometimes. Oh yeah. There's always that one who's like a little bit off and takes things a little too seriously amongst the players, but fans will do some weird stuff. I mean, I think that's how we end up with traditions like uh, an octopus on the ice in Detroit or. A random fish apparently in Omaha. I did not realize that it was just whatever assortment of fish uh, <laughs> was on sale that week could end up on the ice when the first goal is scored. I thought that there was a little yep. more uh, consistency, but no, no, not the case. So that's right. Yeah, like North Dakota series. Um, usually, when all all three of us, me, the wife, and the little one, we usually get McDonald's or, or something before. And so it was just me that went to both North Dakota games and got McDonald's. I got my, a little something to eat because obviously like Baxter Arena prices are ridiculous. So getting $8 at McDonald's will feed me the rest of the night. Um, but yeah, got something. We won Friday. So I had to go back Saturday uh, before the game, got the exact same thing. You know, it's just little things. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I tried to find the same parking spot, try to get there around the same time. Yep. You know, yep. I will wear the same shirt, the same shoes, the same pants, socks and underwear. No, 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 no. Those get changed every day. Let's not be gross. But I will wear the same T-shirt, same pants, the same shoes to the game two days in a row. Pant, pant, underpants and socks. No, no, no. Those have got to be fresh. So, uh. But yeah, no, there's definitely everyone's got their own superstitions and, and, and rocks it how they want to. But that's the great thing about sports. You know, fans doing their own thing and thinking they're affecting games, whether they are or not. Eh, they, only the universe knows. You never know. You never know. You got to do your part. That's right. Uh, all right. So let's look at one play that I did see that I know sparked some controversy. And again, I guess really the end result of the game, this play could have changed the outcome of the game really i think the way saint cloud responded they responded as if the goal had counted anyway and kind of took control of the game but it would have been a 3-3 game at late in the game instead of western down 3-2 trying trying to tie things up ending 4-2 with the empty net goal um so we'll we'll look at this play here if i can get everything working right again that we'll share that with you so you can see where we are there we go this is the hand pass play that discounted the first western goal and i'm just gonna let it run through first so those who are watching along at home there seems to be a few of you tonight and we greatly appreciate that i'm sure most of you are mavericks fans because Brent does a great job of bringing eyeballs to the show. Uh, so thank you for being here. Unfortunately, you have to suffer through a little bit of Western Michigan hockey talk before we dive deeper into your series. But that's just the way we're going to do things tonight because it's, it's my it show. It is your show. Yeah. It, it is your show. I mean, you've so. been here You've been here more than enough to, I hope that you feel <laughs> as though you are a part of the show. But with Mike not <laughs> being here, it is definitely my show and I am a Western. Absolutely. This is where we're going to start, and this is the only play that I actually saw over the weekend, so there's that, too. <laughs> and how unfortunate it is. <laughs> oh, I was so mad. I don't know if I was madder about the fact that I had a fever and my whole body hurt, or that this play... Ah, you saw my reaction earlier. Yeah. Western does a good job clearing the zone, or, you know, keeping St. Cloud out of the zone, and then attacking. 
and really this just zapped the momentum of everything Western had going in we're coming up on what was deemed to be the hand pass right here. Now, play continues. It was waved off, which I think it should have been by the rules. They continue play. Here's the first time St. Cloud now has possession of the puck. They fail to clear it. Western regains possession. Western has now made a line change. The players who had previously touched the puck are no longer on the ice. The puck is carried here by Granger. Still playing a nice job of keep away. I think there's been maybe one shot, a loose puck that's regained by Western. Thrown to the net. And Bump makes a great play to beat the goalie who's trying to reach for the puck. Now, that was a good... Let me just uh, go for just a scotch so I can see the time on the clock. 52 seconds, I think, from hand pass to goal. Now, if you watch the game, and I'll let it kind of... Well, they show... here's You know, they're asking for the challenge, whatever. No one knew what they were challenging. Not well, even. Well, real quick, that was another thing. When I when I watched this this morning, that was another thing. I, again, I wasn't listening with sound, but I did not see the ref. Like we give the refs mics for a reason, and I did not see. I don't. You can tell me if they did, but I don't. Did they make an announcement like goal is under review for a hand pass or anything? I believe they did because the announce team reacted as if they did now again i was in a moderate stupor trying to watch this uh and not really listening to it because i was also watching my sick baby at the time because my wife hadn't come home from work yet uh so it was just a whirlwind of fun um but i believe they announced that they're, they believe it's a hand pass on the play during the review all they show is this where i want it to be is the play of Granger along the wall where he throws it to the goaltender. Right, right before the goal. Right before the goal, yeah. They're not saying that it was actually 40 or 52 seconds before that, and it was a play in front of the net that was being reviewed or even challenged, and it comes back in the whole time the announcers are talking about, oh, you know, it doesn't look like it goes off his hand and it goes right to the stick and, and this and that. And then it comes back and, and they deem it a hand pass. And they they put the time back on the clock because, you know, it should it goes back to the time that the whistle should have blown. But it's such, um, to me, we're in the playoffs. We have had issues with refing the entire season. I'm a strong proponent that the rules on day one should be the exact same as the rules on day 101. It should be game one to game seven of the Stanley Cup championship. You should know what the rules are and they should be enforced the same way. Like yep. that's how sports should be. That's how we should want them to be. There shouldn't be any of this. Well, it's the playoffs and the boys should be able to get away with no 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 they shouldn't be able to get away with anything extra there should be extra energy infused into the game you should hit clean harder you should make passes crisper you shouldn't be allowed to get away with hitting somebody three inches further between the numbers than you did two weeks ago that's absolute nonsense the thing we have seen constantly is one, we're not told what's going on with the rules. We're, we're not told how things are being reviewed or why they're being reviewed or what they're seeing that determines them to be reviewed. Because here is the actual language in the rule book for what can be challenged by a coach. Like this play couldn't even have been challenged by the refs themselves. It had to have come from the St. Cloud side. To determine if a goal was scored as a direct result of a hand pass by an attacking player to a teammate or deflection off of the goalkeeper. This term direct result to me seems rather strict and rather enclosing. 
Like, I don't think it's very vague as to what a direct result is. Yet, we get a vague interpretation of direct result of. In this case, apparently Western keeping the puck in the zone, even though St. Cloud touched it twice for 50 seconds after the hand pass, means that any goal that was scored after that initial touch is a direct result. That's not a direct result. A direct result is thing A happens, thing B happens because thing A happened immediately preceding thing B. We went thing A happened, thing B happened, thing C happened. Like we went down the alphabet before we got to a goal. And really, if you think about it, I don't even know that it should have been whistled a hand pass anyway, based on the rules of what a hand pass is. And we talked about this right before the show, and I was rather animated then, and I feel like I still am. But the rule 84 hand pass, 84-1, a hand pass shall be permitted to a player, shall be permitted to stop or bat a puck in the air with an open hand or push it along the ice with a hand, and a teammate may can take control of the puck unless each of the items below have occurred. The puck was deliberately directed, not deflected, to a teammate. The action allowed the offending team to gain an advantage and a teammate gains possession and control of the puck either directly or when deflected off of any player or official. The only thing that happened out of those three things that says each must happen was that a Western player came away with the puck after it was touched by the hand of a pre another Western player. It was not directed towards that player. That player did not have an advantage to the puck because it lands actually in front of Posh. And here, we can look at it again. I'll show you exactly how the play goes. Here we go. Uh, let me go back here. Here, we'll even slow this bad boy down. Well, let's get a little closer. I'm slowing down a little. There we go. Here's the play back up to the blue line. Slow this down to half speed. Here's, here's the alleged hand pass, which I don't know if it hits his glove or it hits his wrist first. It could hit Posh there, which then seems like it would have been played by St. Cloud before Western retrieved the puck. It looks like it could have been played by 34 there. Maybe it was missed. But it ends up being played eventually by a Western player who didn't really have any extra advantage to that puck. So to me, the ref who decided to not call that a hand pass in the first place is the one who got it right. And I don't know why we reviewed a play 50 seconds after the result of said play. It's just ridiculous what the refing is in this has been this year. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing is that it was the change of possession that I mean, but like I said before the show, like the guy who scored the goal wasn't even on the ice when that play happened. No, they get a full and change. So, and so, like, if it had come out of the zone and everything, like, and then they scored, I mean, it's obviously not a big deal then because it's a new play. But, like, if the only thing is that it didn't leave the zone, then... And Posh has I guess control that's your only... of the puck before it's immediately scored. If he just stays covered, that never gets reviewed to put time back on the, pl the puck for a hand pass because it's not reviewable at that point. The only reason it's reviewable is because a goal was scored. But to me, that's not a direct result. And if anything, either St. Cloud should have been told, sorry, you can't review this play because your player touched the puck and it's too far past to be a direct result. Or they should have been allowed to challenge. It should have stayed a goal. It should have been, oh, sorry, we missed the play. Or it's not a hand pass. In my opinion, it's not a hand pass anyway. And you lose your timeout. Now, again, like I said, St. Cloud responds as if they had been scored on. Western Michigan kind of falls off, and they lose a little bit of momentum, and they end up losing that game 4-2 because of a 
empty net goal. Maybe it's a completely different game if that stays a goal. Bump gets the hat trick and it's 3-3 going late into the third and both teams are fighting and maybe we go to overtime and Western does get the win and then they lose Saturday and win Sunday. I don't know. But to me, it's more the fact that we're... the. It feels like the refs don't know the rules. And the thing is, we learned from the commissioner earlier this year, there's that officiating personnel at every single one of these games who is meant to direct the referees like maybe not necessarily tell them what call to make but to at least be there to like go through the rules and be like oh yeah that's actually not even a hand pass and we shouldn't be reviewing this so right they they should be the ones being like okay what are we challenging okay we're challenging this here's the rule yeah and then the, obviously, the refs at the game make the decision based on what is being read to them. Yeah. And by, again, maybe I have a different understanding of one direct result and two, what each must have occurred means. But reading the rules and watching the video, they got it wrong and Western should have been awarded, uh, maintained the goal, and St. Cloud should have lost their timeout. All right, you've got some plays here to look at. So let's first look at the major that happened on friday let me pull that oh, stop it i don't want your sound please and thank you calm it down and then that one is 752 into the third It'll be this way oh i think i was oh, did I that? math that would be third Twelve fifty-eight left. No, yes, yes. Twelve, twelve oh eight left. So maybe this way, a skosh. Oh, yep, found it. So I need to go about ten seconds this way. Well, let's go twenty just to be safe. We'll share my screen again. I know we're jumping all over the place, but hey, welcome to the world of podcasting when you uh, don't really know what you're doing. Ha! All right. I think it's a, it should be a slightly before this, but we should get a look at the play here. I haven't seen this yet, so this is right here. All right, let's look at that again. Uh, do they show a different <laughs> angle during the replay? Yeah, yeah. Once they, uh, once the play gets stopped, they'll show the the different angles. Talking for position. That was I, that happened so quick. Like, I understand what the Colorado player is. This is such... I hate that t hockey's taught this way. Not the dumping so much, but just... Why are you turning your back to the open ice knowing that this is a play that happens in 90% of hockey games and all he's really trying to do is just run him up the boards and into the yeah. boards. You turn your back last second and stop last second because you're just past the red line to dump it in. And you turn your back to the open ice and dump it in on your backhand. I, I don't like that this and this is taught at all levels. And it, or it's at least done at all levels. And every level it ends just like that. Awfully. And I mean literally the turn is so he's already like into his check by the time Meyer t completely turns his look at that he's already in the check and gliding that's such a tough call to make I I don't think it should have been a major if it was yeah it was deemed a major I think for checking from behind and if that's along the boards like if he just kind of if it's farther along down into the boards. I don't think it's as bad. 
No, the, the, definitely the worst part is because of the exact distance he is from the boards, he can go face first into them. But yeah. if they call... Here's another rule that I hate. Okay, so checking from behind <laughs> and boarding are essentially supposed to be like they're rule 1A and rule A1. Like they're the same thing. The only difference yeah. is where it happens on the ice. Checking from behind is supposed to be an open ice style hit. So if they're applying the checking from behind rule, even though it shouldn't be by definition, it should be boarding because he was checked into the boards, even though he was just perfectly face bent at the waist fist distance or face distance away from the boards. But because he was moved into the boards by definition, it should be boarding. It should be a minor. I think the defenseman did a decent job of putting himself in danger as opposed to, uh, was it Mueller? Yeah. Mueller yeah. L looking to hit him or skating in to deliver more of a hit. Cause really I think he's just expecting Meyer to keep going up the boards. And you see that play where like the two players coast, which is like the funniest, yeah. it's the funniest play in the world to watch. When you just watch the two, you're like, you, you couldn't have just like, I don't know, stopped for half a second and skated behind him. You literally just kept speed with him as he pushed you slowly into the boards. And then you're both just like, all right, here we are. All right, we're still here. Can you not? Yeah. Nope. No. All right. Yeah. It, or even like as he dumps, like complete the turn, because he's obviously going off for a change. Yeah. You know, kind of complete the turn, stand up and get to the bench. Like he, he clearly... Uh, was was bending over as if he he was kind of looking for the hit and trying to I guess you know brace for it but he just kind of just leans over and and yeah. Mueller just I mean he finishes the check yeah and, it, and and again it wasn't like he was coasting in he 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 did get him in the numbers but he has already coasted and really has no place to go but to try and finish the check that he was lined up to hit on the shoulder until Meyer literally goes, and here's my back, and dump it. Like, yeah. Again, that, to me, that, that should have only been a minor penalty at most. I think Meyer did more damage to himself, putting himself in danger, than Mueller went out of his way to make hits. Now, I didn't see the play. I heard about it on Sunday. I think it was Sunday. No, it would not have been. Was it Friday? Western got, I think it was Friday. Western oh. got whistled for five in a game that based on some reactions from Twitter was a little more warranted than that one was. I didn't see it. I could go back and look for it, but I don't know where it is. And I'm just going to assume that it was um, a hit that is very similar to some others that I have seen this year that Western has delivered. And the yeah, five it in was... the game was well warranted. I was some of the little bit that I watched of that game on Friday, and yeah, it was <laughs> it was much worse than Mueller's. I'll I'll say that for sure. I think it was like three or four minutes. Oh no, it was it would have been five minute major. So probably about six or seven minutes left, yeah. because it took up most of what time was left, and that's when St. Cloud I think scored three on the major to really put that game away. But uh, that would have been well. The only time they scored three in a row. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, they would, they would have scored twice. Cause I think it was three, two before that. So I don't think the final score was, I think it was only four, two was the final, but I don't know if they scored on the five on four, but again, I don't know. I'm not going to try and argue with people who know if they know. Uh, what am I looking for here? Uh, 14, 15 into the first. Well, let's not into the first there, you goober. You don't. 14, 15 into Melsier. You write backwards. So that's 545 left. All right. The after the power play goal. Or after the goal, who scores here? Is it right after the goal, or is it before the goal? Or no, it it's is the goal. 
What for goaltender interference? What which one are you doing? The the penalty on Sunday. Bremer's penalty would have yeah. been. Is that the one led, right before it led to the goal? It led to the goal. Okay. Oh, this which one. This one's also, so dumb. Yeah, which was also controversial. <laughs> the penalty that led to a controversial goal was. I saw this on everything college yeah. hockey and went, "Are you shitting me?" Yeah. The fact that Omaha got called for a penalty on this is absolute nonsense. Uh, screen share, screen share, screen share, so that we know that we're looking at the same thing. I have to keep going back and forth. Um, ow, here we go. All right. Softest ah. clip of a goalie <laughs> I have ever seen. Like, to say he, didn't they say he was cross-checking? What is the call? The penalty was cross-checking the goaltender. I have never and seen a one-arm cross-check with the most he, nonchalant elbow. Barely laid an elbow on him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just the lightest little like, hey, I'm right here. And like literally that was all the, the angle we needed. Hang on, let me run this for like five more seconds. Seven cross checks the guy who touched the goalie more than he cross checked the goalie. Yeah. That is that is Emberco getting Emberco style freaking Yeah, nudged him on the blocker. Yeah. And the only and thing Krebsbach come Krebsbach comes over and, and calls a penalty as if he just slashed him in the face. Yeah. The only if thing you, if you keep this run it if you keep this run and he comes and points at him and, and oh, like yeah. just gets in his face. He's a Yeah. Like as if, here's, here's as if he just committed angle. murder on the ice. And it's just like a little like, oh, hey, I'm just also, trying to get Also, before that, fully bit. damn near takes his head off. <laughs> like, that dude got beat up in front of, here, here's, that should have been, could have been close to a high stick. Then he barely touches the goalie. Then he gets cross-checked by number four. Like, he take, your guy takes two hits and... The only thing he could have hurt with that elbow is a butterfly. <laughs> like, yeah. Get out of here with this yeah. nonsense. That's even if that is the that's again, this is what I mean by the definition of rules. What a, a cross check is this. It's, it, I think it's even defined as like this motion, this yeah. motion and this motion are not remotely similar. <laughs> Yeah, I remember we were watching and uh the announcers were like, Oh, we're getting a penalty here. And I was like, I didn't I didn't see anything. And sh sure enough, here he comes. Omaha number twenty six, two minutes for cross checking the goaltender. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Game game three of a quarterfinal where a team has never made it. Yeah. And you're gonna call that on him. Cool. Is it just the ensuing play that is the goaltender interference? Yeah. So on that penalty or on that power play after that that so so called penalty was uh was this play. That penalty was as bad as the hand pass call. Was... Yeah. He's doing a good job of staying out of the blue and completely in the blue paint there. He's still in. He's behind him. Out of the paint. Good steal by you guys. Ref in the way as the puck is loose yet again because they do <laughs> such a good job of that. I like how they just stand there too. Like, move around me, guys. Uh, move your feet where the puck is. Then, yeah. I don't. What do you, you move? <laughs> like, 
Oh, another nice deal. Oh, that was such a juicy rebound. If two could have got a stick on that, it would have been a 1 0 Omaha lead here. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is over 26, like, cuts right through him. And then he's still yeah, he... throwing freaking cross checks. Where'd my mouse go? Please, come here. Hello. You're on that screen. There you are. Back here. Yeah, so you'll see uh, after the shot. Yep. Lava comes right through. Lava comes coming in. Right through and... him. Yeah. I mean, goes Glenn, right through Simon's Simon's head. Yeah, the only thing that like, I down. guess they're like because uh, who is that number two again? No, twenty two. Glenn was kind of like close to him, but he never touches him. No, and their player kind of seals the backside, but he gets. I mean, he gets Lacozzi's stick and blocker hand. It completely moves him to the side. Yeah, yeah, and then Lava legitimately cross checks LeMay right after yeah. the goal. Yeah. <laughs> Sh shows him exactly what a cross check actually is. And again, it, it's not noticed or picked up on though. Yeah. And then... Yeah. So Omaha challenge for, um, for goaltender interference and it was deemed a good goal. Uh, disallowed goal. Which day is that one? Uh, that was the same game. Seven eleven of the first. Let me go back up to the. I can't. Please, oh, I need to set you back to one time. Let's get a timestamp here. Go this way, this way. All right, close enough. Let's see here. Let us review. Oh, I, again, like, yes, everyone wants to say, well, the refs are, are volunteer refs and they're, you can't give the refs hard time because there's not enough refs. Like, cool, you volunteered to do this. You've been around hockey your entire life. Like, yeah. if this, you're gonna be in, in the second, if you're gonna be in a oh, in the second period, not the first period. Yeah, I definitely told you the first, but it's in the second period. Oh well, all right, let's move ahead some time. <laughs> but you should be held to a higher standard than the average fan. Like that, it should be. A thing. Like, why do we have to make excuses? Because it's not their full time job. Like, I get it. But again, you've either played hockey or you have watched hockey your entire like there's a reason you wanted to ref hockey, and it's because you appreciate hockey. But yet you're constantly the reason that people complain the most about the sport. And I don't know that they want to get things wrong. Or they're, you know, it's just, I don't. <laughs> oh, too far. No. Ah, crap. Get out of the way. <laughs> and I'm assuming it's this. Oh, this one. Okay. I, I like yeah. peeked at these when you sent them to me. Or I saw this one somewhere else too. I mean, I saw this one on ECH too. That was a hell of a shot from the point. Oh, are they going to say that you ran into the goalie stick too? Well, it sucks to suck, nerd, because that's how you score a goal. <laughs> Keep a better handle on your stick, apparently. Yes, then CC challenges for offsides. And I mean, every single, at least that. Um, the initial that view, you, you can't tell. No, I mean, 
you you can assume if you can see where the puck is because in all of these the angles puck? you can't you can't see where the puck is no so you're trying to tell me the puck is here because he is clearly on the far side of the yeah blue line. he's off like technically if the puck no. is not in he's offside but yes. you can't tell where the puck is you can't prove that the puck is not fully in the zone right now here's the here's like the one said, thing like, the one time this is the only thing i can give refs credit for when they review things they have more angles than the viewing public has this is a known rule uh it is in every building there are a specific number of cameras that are focused on blue lines goal line and down like i think down the line the blue lines uh some of them are in the boards some of them are above the boards some of them are somewhere else but the viewing public never sees those goals so when they go to review they get all eight of those views shown to them and the first i think 15 20 even 30 seconds of any review is picking out which views they're going to use to determine the view so they may have a view that is coming from this considering ed robeson is one of the new is the newest building in the nchc there's a possibility that there's a camera in this board that is looking directly and sees the puck on the blue line and number 19 across from it. Now right. what we get to see from home is completely different and I'm not disagreeing. I think, I don't know where the puck is. I can't tell you that he's on sides or off sides. I also don't know that him being offside completely creates an unfair advantage either considering he is skating to where the puck would have been not where the puck is going, and it's actually the player who first shot the puck in that regains possession before potentially losing possession to Colorado before getting it back. Again, that yeah. direct result thing, me and that direct result, we're not on the best of terms all the time because I think there's a lot of plays that aren't necessarily the direct result of. See, here, here's a little bit closer. I think but you still can't is, see the puck. Yeah, because it's what it's over here somewhere. Because yeah, because it's it's or in the down here. Yeah, uh, that was down by the crowd. But... Yeah, I mean, in, in some of these shots, you can see that they're looking from a like a it looked like a top down, but even then, the view that they see from top down doesn't show like the full blue line. Yeah. It's just like center ice blue line. So unless there's um Yeah, unless they're one of the angles that they have that the, the TV doesn't have clearly shows him offside. Like yeah. it just and, and like I said, and at, at that point, if it is one of those few angles, like you might as well put it out there and like you know Well, I don't like, think I think the thing is like the the T V production doesn't have the ability to get the angle is what like um, so that was the one thing I think the NFL did right years ago, which, well, there's, there's a thing they did right and a thing they did wrong there. So what they did right is that reviews were based off of TV production camera angles. The thing they did wrong is that it was the TV production crew was responsible for feeding the camera angles into the review boot. Which, if you're a home fan, maybe you're a little, you know, sneaky, sneaky with some camera angles. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, there's camera angles that TV, does, they don't have. They're closed circuit cameras directly to the review software. And right. only the ref see them, only the um, after the game committee sees them. Um, they're never accessible to anyone other than the review crew official staff or whatever so again you're creating this screen between what is perceived and what is done and it just irritates fans who want to better understand the game or to know why things are the way they are or they're just pissed off because they don't see a goal scored or they see a goal taken away that to them should have been a good goal you know it's the same thing with the the saint cloud uh, the first series, you know, the series a few weeks yeah. ago with the cam row save, like there doesn't exist a camera angle 
whether they had it or not, that is clear enough to tell you where the puck is. And because the call on the ice was no goal to begin with, they had to stay with no goal. I mean, you guys had a goal in Kalamazoo where the ref literally comes out and says, because we couldn't tell that the puck did not, not cross the line, it stays a goal. Western then challenges for goaltender interference and it's waved off because of goaltender interference, which was clear as day the first time they reviewed it and refs should just be able to review it and overturn it if there's any violation and it shouldn't be a goal anyway. Why we have to waste this time for two reviews. I don't understand why we make our refs. Why we just choose to make them look like doofuses. The only bigger doofuses in stripes are, deb- are pro wrestling referees. That's, that's it. It's hockey referees and pro wrestling referees, the biggest doofuses on the planet. And we do nothing to help either of them. We're like, ah, we disbelieve. We we suspend disbelief that a 150 pound dude can take a punch from a seven foot, 500 pounder and go, ha 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 ha. But a referee takes a, he takes a cross check like Emberco does. And he's down for 10 minutes and has no idea what's going on around him. (laughs) Nonsense. Under nonsense. But that's, you know, for a different pilot, like a pro wrestling pilot. But, Again, like we, we put these refs, sometimes we put them in a, in a tough situation and they look like doofuses. Other times they put themselves in a tough situation and look like doofuses. But I think every play that we have looked at, I, I, the only one that I can give them some semblance of credit for, like I said, could be the offsides because they might have angles that we don't have. But from the angles right. that we have, because it was ruled onside during the play, I don't have enough to overturn it. So I think of the plays we we saw, they got all of them wrong from what the public sees. And that should be that should be something that the conference looks at. And again, like I, I it's hard to take a, two people sitting in their basement or their down the hall office who don't play, haven't played, won't play. <coughs> what have you who aren't experts in the field at all, who just sit around and talk about it because they like the game or the angry tweets you see from fans who were wronged on the play because the other half of fans are just fine with the call because it benefited their team to take those seriously. But I think if there's something like this, or even if there apparently there's an after action committee that they go through and they pick plays throughout the weekend and then go, okay, you call this, did they get it right? Did they get it wrong? We never hear the results of those, but maybe the coaches do. I don't know. But it doesn't feel like the refs are getting better. If anything, it feels like they're getting worse. And I don't know if that means that we need some kind of like third party TV watching ref, like a, a, a fifth referee who's off the ice, who's not responsible for timekeeping or writing down penalties or whose job is to like watch the game. And he has a direct line of communication with the two refs on the ice or even make linesmen able to call penalties or something. But like we're seeing a downfall in the way the game is played and it's causing the game to regress in my opinion and it's getting somewhere where it's not as we should see talent level rise skill level rise and the game rise but yet we're seeing talent level rise skill rise but then the game does this because it's guys checking each other in the corner because they know they can get away with it or it's guys taking some liberties that they wouldn't ordinarily take and then we get penalties or we get injuries and we get silly plays and we get bad bounce goals and we get angry fans who make it so the refs don't want to ref and then there's less refs and then there's bad refs. It's like we need to empower the refs to call the game right, but we need to encourage like there needs to be some kind of black and whiteness to it or some kind of uniformity to the way the rules are read and understood. I don't think that exists. I think there's too much judgment and individuality to the rules and interpretations of them. Yeah, it was definitely like an up and down year all around. Like, I think 
down the stretch, I don't think we really had too many things to worry about in my, in my memory. Well, but even, was it the Saturday, the last regular season Saturday game between Western and St. Cloud State? Every icing, every offside came down to a fraction of an inch for the last like 10 minutes of the game. They were just hard on it. Like, nope, you're one step off, it's offsides. Oh, you're two inches short of the red line, icing, get back on the ice. Like, they just buckled down on it. And I'm like, by the rules, cool, let's go. Let's, if we're going to play by the rules, let's play by the rules, but let's do it all 60 minutes. Let's do it all season long. Let's sit yeah. down and know what the rules say. What what does direct result mean? Does it mean that if I have the puck and it hits my hand and I throw it to your stick and it bounces off your stick in the goal, is that a direct result of a hand pass? Because to me that is. Or even if I hand pass it to you and the next play you score a goal, my pass directly assisted in your goal. That's a direct result. If I hand pass it and it stays in the zone for an extra 45 seconds to a minute and the entire line has changed and the other team has, once the other team has touched the puck, if it could blow it for a penalty, it's no longer a direct result. And that play in the corner would have blown the whistle, would have blown the play dead for a penalty to have been served, assessed. So, I don't know. I think yeah. that's a, that's enough on last weekend. Let's look forward to some good stuff. Uh <laughs> You know, there's three more games to be played in the NCHC season. Western's not playing one of them, but they will be watching all of them because there's still an off chance that they could not make the NCAA tournament. And to be fair, I want them to be in the tournament, but I don't have high hopes for their presence in the tournament because they are way too inconsistent this year and have been, and I don't like it. This weekend showed just how inconsistent they can be. From, you know, scoring two goals one night to scoring six goals the next night to scoring one goal the next night to, you know, allowing four, allowing one, I think, to allowing five. Like, it's just ridiculous the ups and downs that that team has had. They have unfortunately let me down this year. I had way higher hopes for them that were slightly dashed, but they are my team. They will be my team. I will go see them again next year and if they're in the ncaa tournament i will watch that game and cheer them along the entire 60 minutes and then i'll either be really really happy or really really sad after the game's over and that's how it'll be yeah like we were saying before the show like i mean the latter half of the season western was i mean western and st cloud they were both like basically in the tournament and Dude, they, down the stretch they just kind of played they played themselves out of it and and Fortunately for you guys, somehow you guys lose the series and gain pairwise position. Granted, you guys are on the technically outside looking in now with no more games to play uh, and, and no no well, more wins well, you can prove to you know bump up that position. But we're on the threshold. The door is open. Yeah, we are standing on the inside, looking out into the cold, harsh winter of reality. <laughs> But our coat is on, our, jack, our our mittens are on, we have yet to step out. But we are right there. The bus is yeah. coming. And, and we could, yeah. we're, we're, you know, it's time to leave and we're waiting for that radio station to call it. Oh, you PS 118 off today. Like, let's go snow day. Yeah. Wow, we're we're ready to walk through that knee deep snow t into the off season as opposed to snuggling up for a nice snow day and watching some more puck happen. So Yeah, I mean it just it's been an interesting second half for really all the the entire NCHC minus minus Miami. But um but yeah, I mean Omaha just grinding and making their way and, and playing themselves into position to to a lock now before their first ever frozen face off and then um like i said western and st cloud basically just playing themselves out and and especially st cloud just i mean western it's been not... it's been interesting to watch considering the first half that both teams had western did not lose 
a non-conference game in regulation this year. Now you may say they played a weaker non-conference schedule, and I will not disagree. However, they still did not lose a non-conference game in regulation, and no matter who you play, that is not an easy thing to do. So that has a big part of why they are where they are. Their non their conference schedule this year absolute trash. I think the they did not sweep a weekend outside of the final weekend against Miami. Um, I think the only time they won back to back games was like a Friday or a Saturday Friday run uh, in two different series. So their conference play was not what it had been the previous two years. And and that's something I hope they figure out. Um, I'm already looking forward to seeing, you know, who's coming back, who's signing pro deals. Um, We're seeing some of that across conferences that, and teams that are no longer in the running. Um, But that's kind of where I'm at mentally. Like who's going to stay, who's got some time left and could stay. Who's going to be a big player that, that we keep or retain for another year. Um, Who's jumping in the portal. You know, it's, it's that time of year and, and yeah, the tournament's still here, but again, I just, I don't know that I have high hopes as high of hopes as I did in the off season, but there's still, there's still a chance. Still a chance. I know I, I was, I've seen all the portal talk and everything on on Twitter and and whatever, and I'm like, yeah, usually usually we're right there, and we're kind of speculating because we're you know season's already over, lose lose the quarterfinal, not in a position to even scoreboard watch the last weekend, so it's, you know usually we're in that boat, so it's kind of nice to not have to not have to think about it right now, but obviously. Um, I've had those talks, you know, with myself and a couple other fans, just, you know, like looking forward after this year, this amazing year that we've had, this magical year that we've had, just like, okay, eventually we're going to have to start thinking about who uh, may not be on this team next year, who's played a really big part uh, this season. So, yeah. And I mean, we've already seen some changes even in the conference. Um, Bergeron, it's been confirmed that Bergeron is out of Miami after, I think, four years. He had, five uh, years. Five years. He had, he had a six-year deal, one year left on his contract that Miami will have to buy out. Um, He does not outlive the contract. And really, Mike and I have been talking about this for the last couple of years, like how this dude is hanging on. Like, they really gave him every opportunity to try and do something. Uh, I know they took a couple steps in the non-conference season this year, but historically bad conference schedule. Um, yeah. Historically bad. And we said that last year, that they were historically bad last year. They found a way to beat last year's terrible record with another one. Yeah, I didn't think it was possible. Like the last month, I think, when I when I went and looked at some some of the stats I've got in my, my Google sheet, I was like, I don't think... I mean, three regulation wins, that's pretty tough to, you know, three is a, is bad, but, like, three is definitely attainable in this conference. Like, anyone can beat anyone any night. Yeah. They- and then I think it was, like, they didn't have any regulation or overtime wins after, what, like, January 16th or whatever. Like, the whole second half was just straight losses, basically. They had uh, one tie in weeks six through 12 of the NCHC schedule. They tied Denver. Oh, yeah. But they were. And that, that's the thing, too, is like they they were, I mean, they weren't bad. They just could not find ways to win. And. No. I mean, the week before we went out there, they had St. Cloud in town, and St. Cloud had to scratch their way to wins. Uh, obviously, the tie against Denver, the one game, Omaha. I mean, they played Omaha well. I mean, they they weren't necessarily a bad team. They just 
they, I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but they just could not find a way to win games down the stretch. And it, it I mean, it was just tough to watch, honestly. <laughs> like yeah. it was nice. It was nice getting those wins and everything, but at the same time, like it's, you, you kind of have to feel for them because all the, it, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> I don't, I mean, just anyone who decided to come back and granted, yeah, maybe they didn't have a choice or, you know, maybe they're just super loyal and, and that's great. But for them to come back and, and have to go through, go through that and kind of end their, their, their time at Miami, it's kind of, it would be tough. Here's their record under, or their record by season under Coach Bergeron. 5-16-3. and three. That was his, I believe, first year in 2019, 2020. So the year that didn't have a playoff. 5 17 and 2 in the pod. First round exit to North Dakota, 0 1, because they only played the one game sets that year. 4 19 and 1 with a first round uh, loss to Denver, 0 2. 3 18 and 3 last season with a first round exit, 0 2 to Denver. This year, 121 and two swept by North Dakota in the playoffs. Like, he got worse every year. And people are like, oh, it was hard to recruit during or after COVID. There hasn't been more talent available to coaches in NCAA hockey ever than there were the last five years because it won the COVID year to the transfer portal, three. In the just the increase in talent overall amongst the generation of players that we see roll in every year. This should have been an and opportune moment. Like there are teams that didn't, or there are schools that didn't have teams that are playing better than Miami was playing. St. Thomas, uh, Alaska, one of the Alaska schools, it, both the Alaska schools who had canceled their programs and had to rebuild their teams. Uh, I think the only team that might have been worse in college hockey this year was like Stonehill, who ended up with two wins or something. Now, again, I don't have Augustana. their yeah Augustana. I don't have their overall record. I only have the NCHC record because it's all I really care about. But <laughs> again, like th the thing is, is you can't say he didn't recruit well. He recruited well. He recruited Ludwig Person, but he couldn't keep him because he wasn't getting results. He recruited Red Savage. Red Savage. Red Savage left to went and went to Michigan State. Now plays there. Like he couldn't keep players because of the what they were getting on the ice. And I don't know. It, he might be a hell of a recruiter. And he got talent to go to Miami, but he couldn't keep them. And his message wasn't getting through, and he wasn't inspiring the team. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Like that's that's how it is. You look at a team like. Uh, look what Mike Mayotte did with Colorado College. They were, they have improved every year under his leadership. Uh, Omaha went from a team that was struggling to win these close games. Now they're a close game machine. If a if a game was close, going into the third period or late in the third period, you better hope you put another one on the board because you're going to overtime and they're gonna push it down your throat in overtime. Like there's. They're winning close games. The next step for Omaha is to figure out how to transition those overtime wins into late third period regulation wins or how to, you know, seal off a game. If you're up by two goals going into the third period, don't let a team back in the game with 10 minutes to go in the third. Like That's the next step for Omaha. And if they do that and they still keep the ability to win those tight pressure games and come back and steal wins in overtime, they could be competing for the, those top spots in the NCHC for a few years. None of that has been seen from Miami. None of it. There's no. not been, there's been games where you're like, Oh, Miami's up four goals going into the third period. <laughs> Watch them blow this one. A la North Dakota at home. Yeah. That's yeah. That's another, that's one other one of those games. Like they should have won that game. They, I mean, they just, and, and, you know, you might be like, okay, well, you're a Western fan. Of course, you're going to talk down to Miami. I want Miami to be good. Yeah, I want it was the same. It was the same thing with CC the last few years. Like, it's it sucks having CC and Miami down there just not being able to compete, really. I mean, and, and now CC, look at that. They went 
they they completely turned it around. They almost finished. They could have finished second this year. And I mean, first quarterfinal host uh, of the NCHC, like they've clearly Mayotte has done wonders in in recruiting Embarico to come to to Springs. I mean, the team has just been built around Embarico, and yeah. and you you've seen that. I mean, series sweep against North Dakota. I mean or a season series season sweep against North Dakota. I mean, clearly they've been able to, to recruit the right guys and get the right squad minus a certain uh, goal or a coach that we don't really like in Omaha, but they've got the right squad that they've gone out. And, and just like Gavinette here in Omaha, they are dedicated to making whoever they're coaching be a much better team than, than, uh, the team that they've been brought into and Bergeron just was not able to do that. I mean, it, it's just, it's un, almost unfathomable how bad they've been for so long. Like it's a tale of two halves of the conference. I mean, the, the, to start off one of the first years being an eight seed going on to win the frozen face off, like, that was that was the kind of team that they could have like that they were before when the conference started and now after bringing Bergeron in it's just been just consistently bad and you hope that the guy that they can bring in is able to do that because having eight teams who compete against each other well now nine true with nine I mean I was I was talking to with with other people here like Arizona State is not going to be one of those teams that is probably going to be down there like Arizona State is going to be able to compete as soon as they come in like next year I I am I'm going to expect them to be at least like a a four to six team consistently I don't think they're probably going to have a they might obviously each team has has a season here and there that you know might not go as well or they might have a, a year where they're you know unstoppable but i don't think they're going to be a team that is consistently at the bottom like miami has been do you miami here's here's another reason why i want miami to be good we, we hear this phrase all the time in in all sports iron sharpens iron guess what since they went to the rivalry god damn it i hate this phrase <laughs> the rivalry weekend to end nchc play western has one playoff series win and yet they have never lost a final weekend in the final weekend to Miami. They have they're 16 and 6 in the final weekend of NCHC play. 16 and 6 overall. And 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 of those wins are against Miami. They have one playoff series win. Unfortunately for you, it's against Omaha. But yeah. I, I don't you're not pre- they're not preparing for the playoffs playing that team every year they're not when north dakota gets omaha they have toughened each other up going into the playoffs uh colorado college has not always done the greatest job of you know getting denver ready and i think you see that too well you don't really denver does fine in the first round but they have not had great success in the late rounds of the nchc tournament uh St. Cloud and Minnesota Duluth, they beat the hell out of each other in the final week of the regular season, and sometimes they do it in the first round of the playoffs. And then they go on to win the damn tournament. <laughs> like, I want every team to be good. I want to be able to go, yeah, we're the top conference in the NCAA from top to bottom, one through eight, next year, one through nine. Every team can beat any team in any other conference. Right now, we're like, it's like that that dragon meme, except we've got seven, six <laughs> decent looking dragons, one kind of man, whatever, and then you know, little special Ed over there, yeah. who, who can't figure out how to keep his fingers out of his nose. Like it's, <laughs> I want everyone to be good because I want competitive games week in and week out. Yeah, I I, I do like beating up on Miami, but I would like it to mean <laughs> a little more when we beat up on them. Yeah. And I mean, it just shows, especially this year, with how close it ended up being at the top. I mean, it, it's even closer if Miami wins a couple of those games. Yeah. And I mean, dude, it's 
it's going to start hurting to be that bad in the next couple of years, starting next year. If you're that bad. You are traveling way more than everybody else because you have that first playoff game the Wednesday before the opening round that yeah. you've got to travel to number one. Now you're, you're making an extra trip every year if you're that bad. Yeah, you better you better hope you're not seven or above. Road. You want to be yeah. seven or above yeah. from here on out. So it's it, it is. I mean, again, not to to harp on Miami, but please get better. <laughs> yeah, please. For the uh, sake of the conference. Yeah. Now we know. I mean, that even next year is the last yeah. year for regular rivals. On the final weekend, but yeah, yeah. You saw the big, the Big Ten is kind of like the is the comparison, I guess, right now with with the NCHC. Even Ohio State, who we played, and and I was afraid it was going to be the series that kept us out of the tournament this year. Thankfully, it it wasn't. But you even saw Ohio State go up and and make the semifinals. Like you just never know. In in a in a conference where every team is competitive, at least, um, you just never know who could beat. And going into this last weekend, it was I mean, you might as well have just handed North Dakota the the ticket to St. Paul because Miami down the stretch didn't really help themselves, giving anyone confidence in them in in them. Like yep. that's another thing is is your the perspective others have on you is also going to kill you. So if you're not able to get a couple of those wins, nobody is going to be scared to play you. No. And, which, and that's which, a big thing. Which should mean that you should be able to steal a couple of those games. You should be able to catch some teams off guard. They caught nobody right. off guard this year. Well, they caught Western off guard once in the middle of the season, but I don't even know that that was really catching Western off guard. They were just so goddamn inconsistent that we lost to Miami. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, I mean that's just the thing. Like, you you have to be able to winless in sixteen is certainly going to get a coach fired, especially yeah. if they're already on the hot seat. But if if no one is out there scared to play you, it's it's tough to have confidence in yourself if you, if no one else has confidence that you can beat them. And so obviously like the team rallied around coach Bergeron because I, I don't know if you saw the the tweets of, of the last few weeks at home, they, the, at when they announced him uh, before the game, everyone started booing. Um, so then yeah. uh, on senior night, all the players uh, decided to tap their sticks on the ice when, when they announced him. So obviously you had, the players on your side, it's just they something something was not going right to be able to to be a team yeah. and and come out and win a game. Yeah, and I don't know. That, that's one of those things where like you always the the players will always have your back while you're their coach and they're on your team, but the second one of those isn't true anymore. You find out like they had other opinions, so you take it worth a grain of salt that they did it or whatever. And kudos to them for doing it, but at the same time, like fans does it have every right to boo if yeah. the results are what they are. And if you're the team and you don't want the fans booing your coach, play better for the coach. Like you're just as responsible for him keeping his job as you are for him losing his job. The fact that you guys figured out how to win one game out of 24 in the conference, which are the 24 most important games of the year. I don't know what to tell you. Cool. You tapped your stick for a coach that you guys couldn't win for all year. Yeah. And that, it just shows too, that there's, there's probably some players in that, in that locker room that probably checked out just, you know, you might, yeah, I got the coaches back, but I am not playing for anything right now. I'm just kind of going out there, skating, making plays, and just getting back to the bench. Like, and we've had we've had some seasons like that here in Omaha where you could just tell not everyone was bought in, and you can tell. And thankfully, I don't. I mean, we 
we had the the eight win season a couple of years ago, and that was that was tough to be a fan of. But we've been able to turn it around, thankfully, since then. And, and so, um, I mean, yeah, I just you, you hope that they find a guy who is able to get uh, get control of that program because it needs it. Yeah, they they it definitely deserves something better. And, and luckily, you guys join Western next year. Uh, for some for a little extra competition so we'll we'll get to beat up on each other four times a year now <laughs> instead of just two or at minimum two um yeah. so I'm, I'm looking forward to that it means there might be an opportunity to head to omaha uh more regularly here um that's the last place i'm willing to drive to i think everywhere else is going to require a flight um yeah because i'm not driving the 27 hours to arizona right i'm not doing that <laughs> That's no, a, yeah. that's a plan. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure uh I'm sure one of these next few years we'll make our way about to uh to Kalamazoo and Oxford. It's just uh it's a little tough. Oh yeah. Getting anywhere honestly from Omaha, but <laughs> you're not wrong. Uh <laughs> so you are planning on making the next trip next weekend. Mr. Denver. Yeah, we actually you're the the fan we're version tomorrow. of Denver. Oh, there you go. You were we, we leave tomorrow. The fan version of a Denver, never missing a a uh, frozen face off. I mean, you you've probably already got your plans made for next year too, because you got to close it out. You got to have hit every one of them. I have to go. Yeah. At this point, <laughs> like, there's no way you're not going next year, right? Unless, um, unless you know, obviously, any any emergency. But yeah, yeah we're we're planning on it. I'm trying to talk the old lady into going, but right now she's really only interested in going if Western makes it. And yeah. I'm just like, it's the last one and I have <laughs> not gone. I, th I think I kind of need to make that trip. Um, So we'll see. Hopefully we can figure that out. Hopefully Western can go and then she's more willing to say yes, but I'd also kind of like to make those plans so that we can have them ahead of time. Uh, and make hopefully that Next year, it doesn't fall on St. Patrick's Day again. Well, see, now Western has a record of winning championships on St. Patrick's Day. So, uh, but it won't because St. Patrick's Day will be on a Tuesday next year. Um, oh, true. Well, at least the weekend before would probably be worse. But yeah, that happened a couple of years ago. That was not fun. Yeah. Now, their, but, their most recent conference championship western one on saint patrick's day and it was like 70 degrees in detroit and it was the best ever except i was sweating at the top of old joe lewis arena with face paint running down my my, my neck <laughs> it was so hot but um yeah no enjoy your your trip back up um you'll get to see your team play there this year that's exciting seems like everyone in omaha is is geared up and ready for it oh yeah there's there's a lot of people that are uh that are making the trip and um what was i going to say yeah a lot of people making the trip uh, a lot of people getting their regional tickets for next week in sioux falls um yeah it'll be fun we're yeah we're leaving tomorrow to drive about four hours um so that we can make practice thursday morning nice yeah um okay. i think the only team Luckily, the three out of the four teams that are there are ahead of Western in the pairwise. Uh, I think you guys snuck ahead of us a little bit. Um, yep. So as long as St. Cloud does doo-doo, butt cheeks against Denver again, which would be fantastic if Denver could just erase them from the tournament on Friday, uh, that would help Western out a little bit because if St. Cloud wins a game or wins the tournament – uh, they could give Western the old boot, getting the yep. uh, the auto <laughs> bid there. So the only team I'm not rooting for is going to be Saint Cloud. Um, not because I don't not like Saint Cloud. I think they have a very talented team. I just it benef behooves me more to root against you than for you this year. So suck it. Um, which means I have to root for Denver, which hurts my soul. 
No, see, here's the thing. The, the way that I always think of it is you don't have to root for someone. You can just root against St. Cloud. That's that's true. That is very, very true. Denver doesn't have to win as long as St. Cloud loses. In well, a certain... on Friday, Denver does have to win so that St. Cloud well, loses. I'm just saying. I'm just saying you don't have to say hey. Denver won. You just say St. Cloud lost. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Numbers. Numbers tell the story you make them tell. Um, yeah. Whereas I am hoping the, if Omaha doesn't win it, I want Denver to win it because I do not want to play North Dakota two Friday or two weekends in a row. Hey, I'm saying should, should I, they have to should they have to put North Dakota in Sioux Falls, which I am hoping they don't. Well, for Omaha's fan sakes, but I think it's already like <laughs> the NCHC is just trying to mess up the NCAA tournament, and I am all for it. And yeah. we will probably that'll probably be the one of the big topics of discussion next week is selection 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 Sunday is this Sunday after the conference tournaments have wrapped up, uh, and we'll know who is in the big dance and where they are going. So that is something to look forward to. Um, I do greatly appreciate you coming on uh, with Michael Literally. falling sick after I had struggled being sick all weekend um you have become a great friend of the show and we enjoy having you on every time you're on enjoy getting Always your fun. perspective of omaha and all things omaha and the, the, the little group of people that you bring with you is always good hopefully they stick around for when you're not here we at least hope they do um but i know those shows are definitely a little more western heavy and, and minnesota duluth heavy when duluth plays well um we're working on that. I think the the relationship we have developed has definitely helped with that. Uh, I hope to at some point learn some more folks around the conference and and get some more folks on to to provide some other perspectives. But for now, it's it's a long, slow process because I suck at dealing or meeting people uh, and getting to know them. So, um. I guess you get to hear the the end of the the show YouTube speeches, but uh, there's some YouTube stuff. Our names have been under our pictures the entire show. Yeah, that's right. I switched Mike's name for Brent's name because I know how to do that sort of thing, and I actually remembered to do it. Uh, <laughs> Brent is OMF hockey fan on the Twitters. I'm Painted Bronco on the Twitters. There is a show direct Twitter that was just scrolling by. It'll come by again. It's got some letters missing, so you should really pay attention to it when you're looking for it. Uh, it is Goal Horns and Fight Songs to a degree on the Twitter. Uh, the Gmail, that's easy. That's Goal Horns and Fight Songs with all of the letters there, all squished together, one big long one. Here comes the Twitter handle right now. See, there's some O's missing. You should really pay attention to that one. Um, but the Gmail is all the letters squished together, one big long word, Goal Horns and Fight Songs at gmail.com. You can send your mean comments or your helpful criticisms or articles or questions any of those types of things to either one of those places we will try to see them hopefully um gmail is probably the easiest because it's completely empty all the time so if you send an email i will definitely see it um anything else brent's got a a twitch if he would like to sh throw that up there he can do that that's at Beanbag94. I I usually just stream hockey. I played on... Well, it depends. I, I just had to cancel my Xbox Live, so I don't have NHL 24 on my Xbox. But I do play on my PS4. Mm -hmm. uh, that's usually what I, what I stream. Otherwise, the last couple of weeks... I'm probably next season going to make... If Omaha's not at home, probably make some... Uh, some watch alongs kind of the norm as long as I'm able to, because that's definitely fun. Uh, yeah. I got to get into that a little bit more here. Uh, but again, I try to do that only if the baby and, and the wife are asleep because I don't get to see them very much through the day. And I like to, uh, so I usually like the West coast games. I, I get the best opportunity to, cause they go to sleep early. Um, and that's why this is at nine o'clock on Tuesdays. So, there's that. Um, let's see what else. Mike, I guess if you want to, you can follow him at Twitter too. He is 
M arrow O four on the Twitter. So you'd have to write that down because I don't have it anywhere. I'll have to put it back up when Mike comes back on the show. Um, I think next week's really the last time we'll do NC eight. Well, it'll be, we'll go through the, the end of the, the season with the national championship, but games are becoming fewer and fewer. So it'll be more random talk. So, We'll pick some topics and talk about them. We'll definitely dive into the transfer portal and uh, late signings and, and things of that nature. So we'll probably try and have Brent on again sometime during the off season. Um, we'll try and reach out to some former players, former guests that we've had on before, like bring back Trevor Gorsuch, our favorite. Um, I think that's it. I want to say that's it. Oh, there's, you know, more YouTube things. There's a comment section down there. You can type in it. There's a like button. You can hit it. There's a dislike button. If you choose to, to dislike something, you can do that too. Uh, there's a like. No, I already said like. There's a subscribe if you want to know when this show happens because it's generally around 9 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesdays. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes we have surprise episodes like on Mondays if a guest is only available on Mondays. So you should really subscribe to, to know those things or follow one of the Twitters because – we put it on the Twitters. Um, like, subscribe. There's a so, share. Real quick. So you have Denver beating who? Uh, I have. That is a good question. Where the hell did the picture go? <laughs> who, who do you got winning Omaha, North Dakota? See, this is why I don't do this by myself, because I forget all these things. All right, here is what I got. I've got Omaha once again getting the better of North Dakota. I think you guys play a very strong defense that has shown that it can corral that high-power offense. Uh, I think like Cozy is honestly a skosh. He seems to be a skosh more consistent than person. Um, he, he seems to get rattled a little less. I don't know if that's just because of the shell shock that Ludwig played under the previous two seasons uh, down in Miami or three seasons down in Miami. Um, I think you're built to beat North Dakota. You've shown that you, you guys can, can definitely handle them. Um, so I have Omaha winning that one. And I have Denver beating St. Cloud in game two. And then... Again, as much as I like the Omaha defense, I think Denver, oh, they're still in, I don't know. They're still injured. Them beating Duluth does not tell me a lot about that team. Yeah. They, they, they still have a lot of injuries. But they've handled St. Cloud very well, and I think they'll get by St. Cloud. My first instinct when I just first looked at it was Denver winning it all. And if I sit here and second guess myself enough, I could talk myself out of it. But my first instinct when I just looked at it and wrote it down was Omaha beats North Dakota, Denver beats St. Cloud, but Omaha loses to Denver in the finals. Um, I do like that cozy over either of the Denver goaltenders. I think Omaha can – I think the Denver offense has shown throughout the season that if they score once, they can score a bunch. I don't know that that's necessarily true against Lacozzi, but I, if it's a firefight, I don't think you have the offense to keep up with Denver. If it's close the way that Omaha has been able to play, it definitely plays better into to you guys. Uh, and you could steal a close one, but if there's like, if it's a you know like a, a three one going into the third or a four one going into the third, uh, it leans Denver. If there's a, a more than like a two goal margin, I, I lean strong towards Denver. Um, and it's a lot of pressure to put on a, a sophomore goaltender, even though he's lived up to the pressure. He's played in international play. He's been a solid goalie. 
Uh, I think it's a lot of pressure to put on that team. And I hope there's not a hangover for being the first team that gets there. Uh, I think the fact that you guys have North Dakota plays very well for you because you know how to get up to play that team. And yeah. them being a rival, like, wakes you up to, all right, it's go time, boys. You know, we still got a job to do. We play this team. We know what to expect from this team. Um, so hopefully that shakes off the hangover and you guys can get back to business. But it, to me, it feels like this is Denver's tournament this year. Yeah. I have, and as you were talking, I, I went through probably 70,000 different things in my head, <laughs> but um, I think what I'm going to go with is, well, see, it, Denver St. Cloud is just it. Both, I don't know goaltending wise who has the edge there. I, I mean, I mean, if you're going by like opponents, uh, Posh has only had one bad game against Western in the five that he played. Uh, and kept Western in check all but one of those games. Western lit up multiple Denver goaltenders uh, for yeah. for pretty good numbers. They scored heavily against Denver. Um, also, I really like the Denver goalies are not very strong. I, I think St. Cloud, if they're going to continue to run posh, the only thing that I fear, that I, I fear a little bit is he's a freshman but he's he's played extremely well to this point. Um and for whatever reason they've decided to to not play Bassey anymore. It makes zero sense to me. Yeah. Okay, so then I think what I'll go with is I think North Dakota gets revenge on St. Cloud and beats him in the final. I think North Dakota's um experience in the frozen face off, I think has a little bit of an edge. Well, I mean, I mean the only one who has experience for North Dakota in the frozen faceoff is Brad Barry, and maybe a couple of their offensive players because their defense has never played in the frozen faceoff. Their goaltenders True. never played in the frozen faceoff. They're running on Reese Gaber, Jackson Blake, um, Cameron Briggs never played in the frozen faceoff because he used to play for Omaha. I know it's a cheap shot, but I gotta take it. Um, I mean, it's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's that's true. I just. Omaha's been dealing with the flu for – I know they just beat North Dakota with the flu, but, I mean, I think – I don't I don't know. I don't know, obviously, where they're at in recovery. Yeah. I think it, it might – it might catch up with them this weekend. And, um, obviously, I want them to win. I don't – I don't not want them to win, but I think – that North Dakota just gets the better of them on Friday. Um, it also kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier with Miami, you know, North Dakota walked over Miami. Yeah. And they had Miami. You guys came and threw down in a three game series in, in the four or five matchup that has produced the last two NCHC yeah. frozen faceoff champions. That's true. I mean, it's uh, every team is just on, their own storyline right now. Yeah. I mean, it's it's tough. Every well, uh, legitimately, everyone has their own story. I, Omaha's first I, trip, I mean, uh, North Dakota. You know, the a whole new team. Uh, Saint Cloud State, the champions are the champions until they're not. They're the defending Frozen Faceoff champion back again. Uh, Denver, a team that constantly makes the Frozen Faceoff, but has only won it I think once, maybe twice. Um, I think once though. So uh, there's, there's storylines for every fan base to follow. And it's, this is the fun part about the NCHC when, when this is the matchups we get. Yeah. I think, I think it really speaks well to the season that it was too. Like, I think, I think I still take North Dakota Friday over Omaha. Um, I think every time I have taken your team, you have gone against me. And, and, <laughs> yeah, just, and, you have, and you have proven to be right. So I just want it to be a one time. Give me one time. 
universe. I am pulling for this man's team. He is making the trip to see them, and I pick them, and he doesn't. Please. Plus, you have a free lunch on the line here, my guy. You're trying to That's bet against. True. You're you know trying what? to bet against free lunch. You know what? That's fine. Go ahead. Omaha stick, wins. Stick with North Dakota. Omaha wins on Friday <laughs> because I want free lunch. All right. Remember, there's no such thing as a I, free lunch. No. <laughs> well, you get the free uh, lunch yeah. for making the finals. You don't get the free lunch for winning the finals. So if they make well, the finals, you get a free lunch, and then they can lose the finals for you, and you're fine. True. Yeah. I want. Okay. Omaha wins <laughs> Friday. And I, ah, oh man, I think the, I think the only thing that keeps St. Cloud in that game is goaltending. Obviously, both teams can score, but I think Posh can keep out more than Davis will. I think it comes down to special teams. And, St. Cloud's got to stay out of the box. Yeah, that's true. But I think I think I think Omaha definitely would prefer St. Cloud if they could pick one. Obviously, we don't want to pick an opponent. But I think Omaha, St. Cloud, and in the NCHC final would be electric, considering three of those four games went to overtime, I believe. I mean, I don't know. But I think Omaha, St. Cloud, St. Omaha wins. Yeah. Nice. I mean... Why not? Why not? First trip, make it memorable. Anybody but St. Cloud is the mode <laughs> in Kalamazoo. So. Yeah. All right. That, we're we're going to call it there. Um, All right. <laughs> thanks again for showing up, Brent. Greatly appreciate Absolutely, it. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we already said all the other stuff, so rewind and find it. I mean, <laughs> or don't. I don't care. Whatever. Make a decision. You're an adult. Or a human at least maybe some child finds this who really shouldn't get off the internet child um yeah that's it